It's still Tuesday, July 20, 2021. I'm still Alex, still a corporate cowboy, powered by Incorporating Associates. Just following up. It's the end of day. It's the end of business hours. Business hours. And uh, I might as well follow up. Might as well. See, it wasn't so bad. We made it. We had to show up, put on a little front, like a working cog, little corporate blockhead. And I'm pretty square. I'm about as square as it gets, uh, superficially, in in appearances, if you will. I'm pretty square when it comes to appearances. So there's not much else you can expect from me except to get in, do work, and get out. And that's fun. It's fun to me, at least. Why? Because, uh... Staying in tune, staying in touch with people, communicating socially... That social interaction, that corporate interaction, it uh, keeps my skills uh, attuned, keeps my my hearing attuned, keeps my finger on the pulse of what's happening in in the workspace, in the office setting. Now, I'm not a huge fan of having to come into work in person, right? I'm not a huge fan of having to show up every day working nine to five. So if I can never take a contract in which I set my own hours, I create my own schedule, i.e. an independent contractor. And even if I am an independent contractor, some, you know, some of those uh, constraints might be, might come in the form of uh, hours, or business hours. But more often than not, I would rather opt for an independent contractor's agreement where I work on my own time, I certify, I guarantee the work product that's created, and uh, I get paid handsomely. Ideally, in an ideal world, compensation would be would be generous. But in the corporate world, in the corporate world, you have to negotiate for fucking everything. You have to negotiate to even be an independent contractor. Fuck around. And you'll go from independent contractor status to uh, employee status fairly quickly. Fuck around it even more and you'll find out just how much corporate values independent contractors. I'll give you a hint. It's very little. It's very little. Why? Because the great majority of independent contractors either aren't willing to negotiate or are not effective negotiators. So if you think they can put up a sign in their window that says now hiring fucking 10 or 15 or $20 or whatever the fuck minimum wage is You can rest assured that they will have some people willing to take up the work for the minimum wage. Very few that I've seen, very few applicants are successful at negotiating the minimum wage and negotiating a, a, a pay rate above minimum wage.
independent contractors. I'm just thinking, sorry about the long pause. I'm just thinking it is after work after all. So I have to reflect on some of the stuff I did today. But some independent contractors are much more competent, much more effective negotiators, much more persuasive. A lot of, I mean, for a lot of them, it does come with age, it does come with reputation, expertise. Ultimately, what it boils down to is uh, your aptitude. It's your aptitude for making more. It's your aptitude for being better. You have to show, you have to, uh, you have to personify improvement. You have to embody betterment. Ultimately, that's what your uh, client wants to see. That's what your manager wants to see. That's what the supervisor wants to see. They want to see work product that is above average, that is better, better than average. Let me see if I can tie this into business hours because I said, fuck it. It's already business hours. It's one of the few days that I'm in at nine, out at five and a half. So I'm wondering how can I tie this, this episode into business hours? The aptitude. Your aptitude for negotiating. Ultimately, that's uh, that's what your value comes down to. It's being able to negotiate how much you want to get paid, how much work you want to take on, who your clients will be, essentially the parameters within which your relationship will exist between you as an independent contractor or as an employee and your employer. You have to have you have to have a you have to have an aptitude to negotiate. Aptitude. I suppose it's more creativity. An aptitude for negotiation. Essentially you have to have the creativity to know when and where to negotiate. How much to how much to give and how much to pull. The other day uh, I was I was working in representation of a client and um, that aptitude for negotiation is something you can work on. It isn't definite. It isn't in stone. And that aptitude will show up as a, uh, as either a, a, a limiter, some form of regulator, or even a floor, a floor that sets the tone on what you should be negotiating on, on what you should no- be negotiating for, or who you should be negotiating for. Because there are certain instances that you're negotiating for a person and it should be aggressive or it should be passive. You're negotiating for a client, to, uh, be it an entity, uh, organization. There might be certain positions that they're willing to go easy on that might be actually in their best incentive, in their best interest, and it might behoove them. They might be incentivized to go easy on a position in order to be much more assertive and pursue another position much more aggressively. Business hours, Alex. Business hours. (laughs) I'm talking my way to it. Give me just... Give me just the moments of your time. Keeping... 
keeping yourself bound by constraints should make you more valuable. It shouldn't take value from you. Let me say that one more time. Keeping your product or service bound by constraints such as time and of the availability of it should make your product or service more valuable. I myself am working on that. It takes knowledge. It takes expertise. It takes ability. It takes capability. You have to have the fucking balls to do it. Not just the balls. You have to have uh, the confidence. You have to have... You have to have the confidence and the conviction. It's, it's commitment at the end of the day. For some, I mean, it is contractual. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it comes. Where those business hours are pretty much mandatory. Can't open any earlier. Can't open any later. And uh, you might see this in let's say commercial leases where if you go to like an outdoor strip mall or some form of shopping center you may have noticed that all the stores and the surrounding stores have about the same business hours they might be open at 8 and they might close at 8 or close at 10 close at 11 even some even later And now an entry-level business owner, an entry-level enterprising uh, corporate cowboy, you could say, might stop to think and wonder, why can't they stay open longer? I mean, don't you think that's in their best interest to extend their business hours? Why? Because the longer they're open... Their competition isn't, and so they're making more money. No, no. They're under a contractual agreement. They're under a contractual agreement. They're legally bound. They're legally bound to work within a set. What is it? A set time for business hours it's agreed upon it's something that's been negotiated in their lease and more likely than not is actually a a blanket condition it's just a standard term a standard condition for everyone in that complex or in that strip mall or plaza wherever you might find this hypothetical business So if you are bound by business hours, what's the next best? What's the next step? How do you increase your value? (laughs) You could go even shorter. (laughs) You could go even shorter. But to do that, there has to be some value. There already has to be some value to your product or your service. Otherwise, I mean, if your product or service is shit and you just close earlier, good riddance. Nobody wanted to work with you in the first place. Nobody wanted to come in and deal with you on a business level, in a business transaction. So, you negotiate further by beginning to think outside of the plaza. How do you bring people into your plaza for the set number of hours which are open? Well, there's marketing, there's promotion, there's networking, there's additional enterprising.
And a lot of that isn't time bound. It's not time bound. But it still requires a lot of work. Just not on your premises, just not on your property. This is assuming folks are aware of your business hours. This is assuming that your business hours don't change. You make your product better, you make your service better. You enhance the relationships you have within your community. I mean, if you can step away from your store, if you can step away from your business and have it be operating without you there with a store manager or some kind of facilitator, an operations manager, if you will, you damn near have it made. Why? Because the business will run itself. You just have to go out and create business that will come to you and your locale. So you only have a set number of hours in which to increase and maximize your business. Extending your hours won't help if you don't maximize the traffic to your business. If you don't maximize the use of your services. If you don't, hold on. If you don't maximize the utility of your services. And yeah, doing so requires investment in the form of time, money, effort, legwork, wet work, what have you. There's opportunity abound. Sometimes this work doesn't even happen within business hours. (laughs) There you go, Alex motherfucker. Sometimes this work occurs outside of business hours. It just goes to show that money never actually sleeps. It's people that sleep. Money doesn't operate on business hours. So why should you? Constantly thinking. Constantly evolving. It's only right, right? Have yourself a great rest of your week. Man, I'll catch you on the flip side.